Trigger warning for vegan people. This video might contain flavor. <laughs> oh my this, god. The world's first MSG <laughs> wow. deep fried steak. MSG candied steak. Never seen that in my entire life. Cannot wow. wait to find out which one Uncle Roger is gonna like best. Chef Brian Sao here, not your typical chef. And today I'm gonna be reacting to Guga Foods. I gave Uncle Roger my umami steak featuring Mr. Nigel Ung. Before I go on with today's episode, I do want to give a special shout out to my newest sous chef level patron, Jeremy Lebunsky. Thank you so much for your support. You, along with all the patrons, really do make a difference on this channel. And remember, by becoming a patron, you get to take advantage of some awesome perks like early access to new episodes, but more importantly, patron exclusive content. Ajinomoto, also known as Monosodium Glutamate, aka MSG. Now I've done a lot of insane experiments. Oh man, it. dude, this video, uh, I had so much fun. You guys clearly did because it's definitely my most my most viewed Guga reaction video I have ever done. I absolutely love Guga's video. I wish I, I'm sure all of you out there too, I wish I could have been in the same room with both Nigel and Guga. Guga and I have uh, corresponded a couple times on Instagram and on uh, in the U YouTube comment section. I need to make my way over to Miami <laughs> and have a Guga steak. It will happen one day when things with my sandwich shop, Mission Sandwich Social kind of chill out a little bit. I'm working a lot. I'm working there full time and doing this YouTube channel and the band and my family. So time's very tight right now, but it will happen. And I got to meet Nigel uh, a couple months ago and he's coming back. Looking forward to seeing him again. That is how I got to know Uncle Roger. I like to call this the MSG dry age cake. I think this is Uncle Roger's favorite cake. This is the <laughs> only cake I want for all my birthday from now on. F carrot cake. <laughs> He reviewed some of I my love insane experiments cake. and finally today he's gonna get to have one. Now if you are unfamiliar with monosodium glutamate, let me tell you, you probably eat this every single day. It is in most of the things we usually eat mm -hmm. naturally. And That's today true. I'm gonna be doing something that you've never seen Ooh, before. Look at that, that steak, look, that is an amazing sear right there. It looks like he fried it, which is which is why it has such an amazing Naturally. sear. Let's and look today at that. I'm gonna be doing yeah, I mean, he did pretty much fry it. I don't know what episode that's from, um, but that is... <laughs> That's fried, but that's also an amazing sear. Something that you've never seen Ooh. before. That I can guarantee. Ooh, what is that? Like maple syrup or something like that? I'm sure someone in the comments will let me know. Here's what I thought of. We yeah, all know that be charcoal kind of steaks syrup. are one of the best things in the world. Another mm -hmm. thing that is fantastic is whenever you deep fry in steaks. So I thought, what if I deep fried a steak in MSG? Well, let's find out. The first thing to do is to lay a good amount of MSG deep on a tray. Then MSG. to discover its okay. melting point. Into the oven it went at 475 degrees Fahrenheit. After about 30 minutes, oh. Take a look. Oh, it's melting already, and you can clearly see that it's also changing color and getting darker, almost like sugar. Because after about one oh, that was so that B roll earlier was not a syrup, that was MSG. Oh my god, is the, the strip steak that they showed earlier that was deep frying was that an MSG like that? Wow. I've never seen that before. I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Cook Unity. Cook Unity is the first ever chef to you delivery service that brings you restaurant quality meals direct to your table. Cook Unity partners with award-winning and innovative chefs using the very best ingredients to make healthy, balanced, and delicious meals. When they source food, they use fresh, seasonal produce, prioritizing whole foods, but also local suppliers. You start off by setting up your preferences, so you get to pick what you like, but also what you don't like, and you set up your meal plan anywhere from four meals a week up to 16. Once you get that set up, you can choose from hundreds of meals created by Cook Unity's 50 plus chefs. Menus are posted two weeks in advance, so you get to tailor the meals to your dietary needs and preferences. Meals arrive fresh, not frozen, coming in recyclable, compostable and or reusable packaging, plus the chef's heating instructions, expiration date, and nutritional information. Now you may be asking yourself, Chef Brian, aren't you a chef? Couldn't you cook your meals? Well, guess what? I am a busy man and this grilled chicken with squash and zucchini spirals by Chef Irvin Paredes. You know what? The meal's ready to go right here. I just need to warm it up. And guess what? I went to the doctor, found out that uh, I'm pre-diabetic, high cholesterol, need to lose some weight. And I was able to set those preferences for a low carb, healthier meal option. And that's exactly what I got. And guess what? 
I get to save a heck of a lot of time. Remember, I work in a professional kitchen. I often treat the food that I'm making for my customers, which I taste every day. It's part of my work. It's part of quality control. And sometimes, to be honest, I don't want to eat my own food every single day. So when Chef Andres Mendez makes this grilled shrimp and quinoa bowl, well, uh, honestly, you're a lifesaver, Chef Andres. Go to cookunity.com slash Chef Brian or visit the link in the description below and use my code Chef Brian 50 to get 50% off of your first order of Cook Unity meals and try it for yourself. Your melted MSG. And this thing is hot because if yeah. I stir it a little bit, take a look. It's just mesmerizing for me to watch. But as soon as it cools down, it completely solidifies once again. Mm -hmm. So now that I have this knowledge, let's go ahead and try the deep fried one. I immediately put it back on the burner and brought it to the melting point. After a quick stir, this thing is now ready. So I grabbed a piece of steak in a skewer and immediately oh threw God. it in there. And as I you can see, it is basically cooking and deep frying the steak in MSG. I only wish you could smell this because the more I do it, wow. the more mesmerizing it is. At the same time, I had no idea if this was going to be good or bad. Uh I would not, I guess I would try it, but man, I would be a little on the fence. So I don't know if you guys have noticed I've been losing some weight over the past few weeks. Not to plug Noom, but I've been started using the Noom map and I've been keeping up with it. But I'm glad I started it because, and this is not a plug for them. The other video was a paid partnership, but 100% being for real. Went to the doctor, found out I'm pre-diabetic and high cholesterol. So I've really like been on top of my diet and uh, that would totally ruin it. <laughs> For about two minutes, I removed it and set it down on a plate. And as you can see, this thing wow. still bubbles. Oh, and high blood pressure. And I know for a fact the MSG ain't gonna help. Once it was fully rested, it was time to go ahead and take it out oh of the skewer. Then I sliced it up and take oh a look at this. Oh my God. The world's first MSG <laughs> wow. deep fried steak. MSG candied steak, never seen that in my entire life. And the smell yeah, is no, just doesn't. horrifying. So you got me thinking, there's no way I can give this to Uncle Roger. So no. I had several different other ideas to give it a try. Okay. And everything started off with these three beautiful steaks. As you can see, they are Australian Wagyu Marbling Score 7. And since I have three of them, this is how the experiment is going to go down. For the very first one, I'll be dry brining it in MSG. So okay. I went ahead, opened up the bag, and started to add a good amount. Maybe a ridiculous amount. Then I thought, wait a second, this is a mistake. Let's just add the right amount for this experiment. So after removing it, I was left with the perfect amount. And from past experiments, I know that only adding MSG is not enough. So I went ahead and also seasoned it with okay. a little bit of salt, as now this steak is fully ready. The other mm -hmm. two steaks, on the other hand, will also be getting dry brine. However, with salt only and no MSG. And if you are unfamiliar with the term dry brine, let me explain. When you put salt on the steak, the first thing that it happens is dries out moisture. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes 100%. liquid. And just like a sponge, the steak reabsorbs it into itself. Yeah. This process is called dry brine. It's just a fancy word to say, put salt on it and let it rest. There you go. I, listen, I have nothing to add right now. I'm like just a spectator. Uh, Guga is on top of his shit. I have cooked and served a lot of steaks in my time, but I am definitely not as much of a pro as Guga. Yes, that's me sucking up a little bit, but it's also true. Leave it in the refrigerator overnight. As that was happening, I could not stop thinking about deep frying a steak in MSG. However, I was determined to make sure I get success this time. And one of the best things you can deep fry a steak on is Wagyu fat. Mm. So I went ahead and grabbed a mm. good amount, put it on a skillet and let it melt. Then I had to choose the right amount of MSG. And I thought one tablespoon is good enough. Hiya, why so weak at more? <laughs> I almost forgot he was in this video. <laughs> Too little. So you heard the man. I went ahead and added a ridiculous amount. Something I highly recommend you not even giving it a try. Mm -mm. As this is the most amount of MSG I've ever put it together with Wagyu fat. And surprisingly, because it's a ridiculous amount, it didn't even melt all the way. I do want to make a comment. Notice how he didn't fill that skillet to the very top. For some of you, that may be obvious. For those of you who it's not obvious, for when you put in that steak, not only will it raise the level of that oil because you're adding more volume to the pan, but don't forget after the fat gets hot, it expands. And then after you add something that contains moisture into it, it'll bubble because the moisture is cooking out, it's vaporizing, and that's why it creates bubbles. That bubble, you also have to keep that in mind when you're filling your fryers in any professional fryer or even tabletop fryers for your home. There's always a line where they recommend don't fill over. They also recommend don't overcrowd it too much because even if 
Even if you don't go over the fill line, if you put too much product, you can also potentially have a spillover, which gets very dangerous. I mean, Guga knows exactly what he's doing, making sure he's putting in the right quantity of fat into this pan so it doesn't spill over, even if he adds the product. Now, adding MSG into the oil, I'll give you one example. And I think this will kind of explain it. There was uh, one time a rookie cook was seasoning a fried product over the fry oil and then all the salt was going inside and the chef freaked out. And the more product you add into fry oil that is not purely fry oil, the, the faster that fry oil is going to deteriorate because there's something in there that's foreign, it keeps getting cooked, keeps denaturing it, and then it's going to burn eventually and then create off colors and flavors in your oil. So that is why for rule of thumb, you always salt your fried product away. So you fry it first and then you put the product into a bowl and as you're tossing it in a bowl, then you salt, okay? However, uh, that's not to say, for example, I have made seasoned flour with garlic powder, onion powder, oregano, um, you know, maybe a touch of paprika, touch of this and that, and salt. Chicken cutlet gets breaded and it goes into the fryer and you're introducing foreign product. And the it comes out to be absolutely outstanding. However, what is going to happen to that oil? It's going to get beaten up and it's going, you know, I'm not going to get as long life out of it as possible. Can I deep fry it with just breadcrumb and the chicken and then season it with this spice later? Yes, but it's not nearly as good of a product. So it's not criminal to introduce salt or MSG into the oil. It's just not um, recommended if you want to uh, keep the longevity of your fry oil. And especially today with the crazy inflation, uh, fry oil has like, doubled in price. And I'm sure many of you know that, maybe even more than doubled actually, now that I'm thinking about it. So you wanna do everything to stretch that oil as far as possible because to fill a fryer is like one and a half to two of those 35 pound giant jugs of fry oil and that is not cheap. And even though I'm gonna be making some beautiful steaks for Uncle Roger, if you come to my house, mm. you know I'll be mm. making a side dish as well. Mm. And this one is quite unique. It looks like some kind of chili oil, or scallion, some garlic in there. I think that's garlic. Looks like he's, this is a mashed potato with a Asian vibe because it very much looks like you know, a Chinese, Asian, Sichuan type of uh, chili, chili flake. The first thing to do is to go ahead and boil some potatoes. Once that's done, I ran them through a ricer. Mm. This will prevent from getting any lumps. Then I yeah. added a good amount of butter. Nice. When you make mashed potatoes with a ricer, you always end up with a much better product. It's fluffier, it's lighter, and it's not as gummy. When you do it with a smasher and beat it up and mix it around, the starch molecules start to bind together as you're whipping them around, moving them around, and then that's what creates that gummy texture. Have you ever had dinner at someone's home and like the mashed potatoes almost look like they're jiggling? That's because the starches have all glued together and you have a gummy product. So that's how you know someone used a masher or whip, you know, whipped it one too many times. With the ricer, it just pushes it through this sift and breaks it apart. As long as you're gentle with it, like I said, you get a far superior product using a, a ricer for mashed potatoes versus a smasher. Cream cheese, milk, and salt. Mixed everything mm. together until nice. I had the consistency Super simple. that I was happy with. Then I poured it on a serving dish mm. and it was now ready for mm. me to make my seasoned oil smooth top. For that, I added a little bit of avocado looks. oil into the pan. Then nice. I added I some love, garlic. I love avocado oil. I think it's, you know, it's one of my favorite oils to cook with. High smoke point and also very neutral in flavor. Even more neutral than vegetable and or corn oil. Excellent sauce, a little bit of sambal chili, red nice. bean chili paste, and mixed everything together. Nice. To finish it off, I added some spring onions, Knew it. mixed it a little bit more, Asian and vibes. poured everything into my mashed potato. As to finish it off, I just mm. added a little bit of spring onions, wow. and my side dish was now ready for Uncle Roger to Hell give yeah. it a try. And if you've ever seen him, if he does not like something, he will let you know. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, this will taste fantastic and he likes it. But I'm curious to find out what he thinks. Because the most important thing God, is the steaks. Talking so about good. that, by this time, it was fully dry. Dry brined. And notice that we no longer have any salt on the meat because salt does not penetrate fat. 
However, as you already know, this thing only has salt and MSG. So for the seasoning, I applied freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder. As now, the only nice. thing left to do is to go ahead and cook them. So one of our steaks is going to be the control. The second one is the one that we dry brined in MSG. And the very last steak will be deep fried in MSG oil. And I cannot wow. wait to find out which one Uncle Roger is going to like best. Because now I say it is enough talking and it is time to cook some beautiful steaks. So let's do it. Love this part of Guga's videos. <laughs> the uh, Home Depot music <laughs> over his grill. Woo! Beautiful. Nice high heat. Get a hard sear. Look at that, man. Look at that. Uncle Roger just sitting back. Feed me. Feed me, baby. Yeah. So it looked like he seared it, he put it off to a cooler spot of the grill, and maybe he's just finishing it, giving it one more sear before he serves it. Wow. Uncle Roger, let me get in on that action. Wow. Wow. <laughs> How many times did I say that? <laughs> Should have started a drinking game. <laughs> Beautiful medium rare. Oh. Wow. Gorgeous. I know that looks good, but before we try it, I got a quick announcement. It is finally here. Guga's rub is now for sale. I have been working on this nice. rub for a very long time. I posted a video on how to make it at home about four years ago, and since then, I have changed the formula a hundred times. And now it is finally ready for you. Nice. Many of you have already used my old recipe. Just wait until you try this one. It is better. It is way better. Amazing on beef, pork, chicken, lamb, fish, and my favorite, burgers. Mm. This rub is what I use in 90% mm -mm. of everything I cook. Get yours now at shop.gugafoods.com. You know, I want to keep this in the video because number one, you know, thanks to guys like Guga, I have a channel. I highly respect Guga, so make sure you go check it out. See that uh, steak pillow in the back? Oh, shout out to Kevin Martinelli for uh, getting me, getting it for me for my birthday. I'll put a picture of it now. Uh, he's one of the cooks at my shop, Mission Sandwich Social. He observed that I mentioned I thought that pillow was super cool and picked one up for me. Thank you very much. I appreciate you so much, Kevin. Oh, and make sure you go to the original video if you haven't already. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. And if you can do the same for my channel, that would be greatly appreciated because unfortunately, my Uncle Roger Cheapest Woman video got demonetized and well, it sucks. All right, everybody, here we got our beautiful yeah, steak. Best and part. Uncle Tasting. Roger, welcome to my house. Thank you, thank you. This steak looks so good. Thank you, Uncle Roger. Nice. What are, you, are you ready nice. to try them? Yeah, let's do it. Are you excited? Yeah, yeah. Even he's speechless, doesn't have much to say. It's like, damn, someone made me something super nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna be good, bad, or ugly. You've seen my uh, MSG dry age experiment. What did you think about that one? Uncle Roger think it's it pretty good, pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. You're like a madman, Uncle Kuka. That's correct. Yeah? <laughs> I think you're getting too bored in your marriage. Trying to find something <laughs> to do. I, uh... Enough talking, let's give it a go. So we got three beautiful steaks. Let's nice. just dig in, please. Okay, okay. You like medium rare, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, good. There's no other way to eat steak. I, uh, well, I agree 100%. You should all judge people. Yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> if you go on date and then your date asks for steak well done, thumb their ass. <laughs> that a red flag? I don't know what I'm going to enjoy more. These steaks or Uncle Roger's jokes? Who that guy? <laughs> <laughs> Who is he? I forgot to introduce you. How rude of me, Uncle yeah, Roger. No, I'm the janitor. This is Leo. You're the janitor. I'm the janitor. <laughs> okay, your janitor, you treat your janitor good? No. He got steak? His family. Oh. <laughs> uh, very good, enough talking. Let's give this a go. Let us know if it's good. Yeah, Sounds good? Come on. Cheers. Bye All right. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Oh, mm. Mm. nice mm -mm. and juicy and tender. I'm so hungry. Is there anything wow. better than steak, Uncle Roger? Yeah, egg fried rice. It's <laughs> <laughs> very good. Good amount of fat, good amount of char, just perfect. And nice. thank you, by the way, for helping me grilling it. Of course, of You course. look like a grill expert. No problem. Thank you for teaching me, Uncle Kuka. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I think it's nice and beefy, extra juicy, I must say. Wagyu, I mean, you know, it's going to be juicy because there's so much fat interlaced between the muscle, uh, the protein fibers. And when you warm that up, what happens? It melts and it gives you the sensation of it being juicy and moist. Very rich, very juicy, very beefy, 
and very delicious. Very good. And also, fat is, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It takes on aromas very easily, any type of fat, right? So if you like left a container of beef tallow open in the fridge, you, you left it open uncovered and you took it out a week later, it'll smell like your fridge and it'll that aroma will never leave that fat. Same thing happens with this beef is that it really takes on the aromas and flavors of whatever you're feeding the cow. So if you're feeding them a diet high in grain or high in corn or high in nuts, it will come through in the final product. Up from here or down from here? Sounds good? Okay. All right, let's go. Second one, please. Dig in. Second steak. Are you ready, Ankara? Just smell it. Does it smell any different? Smell like steak. Smell like steak. <laughs> <laughs> let's give it a go. Let's try it, see if it tastes different. Cheers. 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 Oh my. Mmm. For some reason, it tastes meatier mm. than the other steak. That's the um mm. umami. I can taste the cow more. Uh, that's, the, that's the MSG, the flavor enhancing. The, in flavor, the flavor enhancer. It's like kissing the cow, but this one is like making out with the cow. Oh my god. It's more intimate. More flavor. Yeah? Yeah? You know why? Is it the magic white powder? Oh. oh Careful, we're in Miami. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so this one tastes better for you? Is it better than the first one or no? Better than the first one. Yeah, I agree 100%. It's really surprising to me because I feel like the beefiness, the juiciness, and the richness all got amplified so much mm -hmm. from the previous steak. That's Absolutely what MSG wonderful. will do. So this one here, Uncle Roger, I dry brine it in MSG. Mm. So you were right on the money. <laughs> look at it. <laughs> look at Uncle Roger's lips all puckering up. <laughs> Not only is he happy, but that amount of fucking MSG is going to dry you the hell out. Nice, nice. That's why it's so good. My favorite white powder. Oh, no, I meant... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I say for us to cleanse our palates, we give it a go on this uh, mashed potatoes. Let me serve you, Uncle Roger. Tell me how you like it. Just one scoop is enough. Yeah, that's enough for you? Yep, that's enough, that's oh, enough. Good. Thank you, thank you. These are American Watching portions. Figure. Uncle Roger not used to this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's give this a go. Enough talking, cheers. Mmm. Whoa. Chinese flavor. Chinese flavor, that's right. Wow. Asian flavor. What kind of chili sauce is that? There's a lot of things going on in Coraja there. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I notice I don't have much to add to this video. I'm just literally spectating it along with you guys. I mean, Guga's, Guga's execution is always really excellent. Guga's execution is always excellent. Yeah, I guess. The excellence of execution. Wrestling reference for you there. Guga takes it so far as to have a control stake and an experiment stake. In this case, he has two experiment stakes. You know, again, that he's always got his bases covered. See how Very the oil cool. just completely changes in the mashed potatoes, you know? For such a simple thing, just an oil on top, it adds such a level mm -hmm. of depth and yep. complexity. So, I mean, essentially, Essentially, let's just call that like an aroma oil, right? You can do the same thing with uh, scallions or shallots or whatever you can, or garlic, just garlic, and maybe put some dried spices and get all these amazing flavors infused into the oil and use that to top anything, a pasta dish, mashed potato, whatever. I highly recommend it uh, for, you know, when you guys are cooking at home to give that a shot. And the thing is, it's like, unless you burn it, it's pretty hard to mess up an aroma oil. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I highly recommend you guys giving it a try. You can do the oil ahead of time. And mm -hmm. all that oh yeah, so another thing I didn't mention, that's something you can do ahead of time and have it sit in a jar at home. And when you're done, you make another batch and it has a very long shelf life. And most of the times, nine out of 10 times, you don't even need to refrigerate it. By the way, I really like how that nephew talk about food. Nephew Leon. Talk about food like he's a sport commentator. He's on the 30 <laughs> yard line, the 20, the 10, touchdown. That's why we call him? The description guy. Ah, <laughs> good job. While I'm cleaning the floors, I just have like an encyclopedia and I'm just looking through like learning words, learning vocabulary while I'm cleaning the floors here. Nice, nice. You're gonna be food critic one day. Uh, you're not a generator. I mean, a, 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 gener a generator. He's <laughs> not generate generator there, the electricity. <laughs> <laughs> you're not a janitor. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, we're gonna steal all your secret and then go work for Salt Bay. No, I'm not gonna work for Salt Bay. I have a high requirement for people I work for. <laughs> <laughs> Emotional. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, salt bed. He, he, I, from what I hear, he charges an insane amount. If you can afford it, God bless, man. But 
I know I won't be going there anytime soon. That was fantastic. I feel like my palate has cleansed a little bit. Let's try the very last steak. Give me your honest mm, opinion, please. I'm, I'm it. very curious here how this came out because I think he dry brined it and he deep fried it. Dry brined, brined it with MSG and deep fried it in the MSG oil. Let's see. Mmm, interesting. Mm. It feels fattier, slippery. Yeah, like greasier. Yeah. yeah. I agree with that. Oh, but the actual flavor, fried. I think we've actually gone a step down. I like the second one more. I agree 100%. The second one was better. Second one, the best. What is that one? This one here, I actually made a Wagyu MSG fat. Ooh. And then I deep fried the steak on it, Uncle Roger. How is that not better? That's it, crazy. I think it's just a little bit too much. Yeah. I, because, you know, Wagyu already has a very high fat content. So by deep frying it, I do think it'd be a little overwhelmingly fat. Definitely agree by doing, I think the grill is the way to go or pan searing for a Wagyu steak. Too much of a good thing is not good. Which yeah. one's your favorite, Uncle Roger? Second one, of course, the white powder steak. This is no white powder, Uncle Roger. MSG is white powder. MSG is just fantastic, everybody. You heard it yes, from the it champ, is. everybody. He yes, said that the middle one is better. I agree 100%. Thank you so much for coming, Uncle Roger. Guys, make sure you check out Uncle Roger's channel on the link on the description if you haven't seen it already. Yeah, make sure you uh, like, follow, subscribe uh, to Uncle Roger, Nigel, Guga, the original videos. If you could do the same for me, leave a comment, like, subscribe, make sure the notification bell is on. That would be greatly appreciated. Unfortunately, one of my videos uh, from this month was demonetized or copyright claimed, which was the Uncle Roger cheapest woman video. So if you can do those things, it would help me out a lot. Hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. And uh, remember, don't be afraid to fail because it can only make you stronger. And with that said, I am Chef Brian Sal, not your typical chef. And I'll see you really soon.